Hey everyone, thanks for joining today. In this video, we're going to be talking about IV rank versus IV percentile, IV standing for implied volatility. We're going to look at how these two indicators play into options trading and more specifically options pricing to figure out how you can use these two to guide your options trading in the future. So we've had some questions in the community about IV rank and IV percentile, the difference between them, when to use them, and how to measure IV for certain indices, ETFs, and futures. So we want to start with explaining the difference between IV rank and IV percentile. Up on my screen here, I have Thinkorswim. This is the SPX one year, one day chart. And below here is the navigation trading indicators, green IV rank and IV percentile, both expressed linearly with graphs at the bottom here. So you can see there, they are correlated, but a lot of times they're different. Um, when we're looking at either of these, these indicators, if one of them is over 50, we're looking at a higher volatility environment. And you can see on the graph here, when volatility is spiking with the IV rank and IV percentile, you can see large moves in both direction. Um, and then this is earlier in this year, February of 2023, and later in this year, as there's been a bullish push over the last couple months here, starting in the mid to end of, or the end of October, things are going up seemingly continuously. And because of that, volatility is coming down, both the IV rank and percentile. So let's define both and look at how they're interpreted and then look at the differences between the two. IV rank, is going to be comparing the current IV implied volatility to the highest and lowest levels over the past 252 trading days, one year. Now, both the IV rank and IV percentile are using 250 days or the last trading year as there are about 252 days in the trading calendar year. Biggest difference you'll see right away. One is expressed as a number IV rank from zero to 100 and IV percentile is a percentage, obviously, 0 to 100 as well. That number for IV range is going to indicate the current implied volatility's position within its high and low range. You can see the formula here, and it's going to give you a number that represents where the current IV stands relative to its range in the last year. So how to look at this, the higher the IV rank, closer to 100 is going to suggest that the current IV is close to its highest level over the past year. And the lower IV, IV rank closer to zero is gonna tell you that it's closest to the lowest level in the past year. So the IV rank is looking at where the IV is relative to the high and low of the year. What the IV percentile is going to tell you is the percentage of days in the past 252 trading days where IV was below the current level. So it's going to give you a broader view of the historical distribution of IV and is calculated as such. Now, here's where you can draw the distinction. This calculation is going to tell you the percentage of days where IV was below the current level, not where it is compared to the spread of the high and low of the last year, but the amount of days that are below the current level. So a high IV percentile closer to 100 is going to tell you that a high percentage of the days in the past year, the IV was below the current level. Conversely, low IV percentile closer to 0% suggests that the current IV is higher than it has been most days over the past year. So IV rank is gonna focus on the specific high and low range of IV over the past year, where the IV percentile considers the overall distribution of IV across all days in the past year. This means I rank is going to be IV rank will be more in regards to the extremeness of the current IV compared to its own historical levels, while the percentile gives a broader context by showing how often over that past year IV has been below the current level. So you can see the correlation here and a lot of times where IV is pretty much in lockstep, especially around the contractions uh, and expansions, but what are the situations and why is this happening where you know IV rank and IV percentile have such a big spread or are so different? You're looking at here, you know, IV rank, let's see, in March of this year, 
is at 42 and IV percentile is at 58. So this isn't exactly, uh, exactly apples to apples comparison here, but you know, you kind of see a spread here on 927 between IV rank and IV percentile. So give us an example of how this can happen. So you'll see on the screen here, we're looking at a current implied volatility of 25%. Past year's high IV of 40 and the past year's low IV of 10. So those last two figures will only use to calculate IV rank. The current implied volatility is the only thing from today that we're going to use uh, in that current implied volatility calculation. So let's see the IV rank calculation here. We're looking at 37%, so that would be 38, indicating the current IV is going to be below the midpoint of last year's high and low range, uh, you know, represented here by 38 out of 100. The IV percentile. So out of those past 252 days, there were 50 days where IV was below 25. It gives you an IV percentile just around 20. So the difference here the IV rank of 38 is going to suggest that the current IV is within the mid range of its yearly high and low. But in the IV percentile, it, it, IV percentile, it'll tell you that the current IV is higher than it has been on most days of the year. So this is kind of giving you a where does it fall in the range and ranks at with ranking and the percentile gives you a ratio expressed in a percent of the amount of days that were below a certain point. So what's an easy way to remember this? Well, try this. Thinking of IV rank like a ranking in sports and IV percentile like a percentage of days. In sports rankings, the teams are going to be compared to their historical performance throughout the season. And similarly, IV rank is going to compare to the current IV, IV level to its high and low, same with the highs and lows of a team within a certain period like a season, providing a rank within that range. IV percentile as a percentage of days. Percentages often represent a portion of a whole, a ratio, like I mentioned. IV percentile tells you the percentage of days within a specified period where IV was below that current level. So we'll see in just a second about using VIX as another way to show implied volatility, uh, but I'll just pull it up here for one second. But another one of the questions that we got was, um, you know, how do we measure implied volatility in, in ETFs and stocks and futures uh, and not just, you know, index funds or indices like SBX. So this navigation trading tracker that shows the IV rank and percentile <clears throat> can also be used in ETFs uh, with stocks and also with futures themselves. And actually this is, or sorry, that's the VIX future, so that's a bit messy, but um, let's see another futures here. There we go at the bottom. Um, another couple ways you can, besides the VIX, there's, like we said, the VIX futures and the new VIX one day chart, which won't give you the indicator at the bottom, um, but we'll get to that in just a second. Also within the options chain, let's take a look here. This might have been pointed out in other videos, but uh, for each option chain, uh, the DS21, DS22, weeklies and quarterlies, you actually see the IV percentile in the left here. <clears throat> and then on the right, you see the expected move of the stock. So that's, you know, uh, for tomorrow, uh, SPX is expected to go anywhere up to say 29 or 28 and a half points up and 28 and a half points down. Now that's going to be uh, the standard distribution. So I believe, you know, if you're looking at that kind of on that bell curve, you would have about a 68.3, I believe, percentage that within that range, you know, that um, that index SPX will fall in, into that range. And you can see these, you know, same kinds of things in the option chain, certain options uh, cycles are going to be more volatile and have more IV than the other ones. Um, you know, we, we talk about this in our calendars courses, 
Um, but each one of them is going to have the implied volatility and the expected move for that cycle. So right now we're looking at thinkorswim. I wanted to pull this up to start to look at how implied volatility can be measured. Um, on the left here, this is SPX. These are some uh, these are some charts down here that we'll get to in just a minute. Um, a couple different indicators that you could use. Uh, this is VIX, and this is the volatility index that is a pretty widely used way to measure market expectations for future volatility. Uh, a lot of times you'll hear investors or analysts refer to this as a fear gauge. And what it is is going to be representing the market's consensus on the anticipated volatility of the S&P 500 index represented by SPX on the left here over the next 30 days time. So might go without saying, but a higher VIX is going to suggest a greater expected uh, movement or turbulence in the market, while lower VIX usually tells you that the perception is relatively stable or predictable. Um, so looking at VIX on the right here and SPX on the left, I actually have a an on-demand view of December 13th, 2023. So you can see on, on the SPX here, all through the months of November and December, we've had a pretty high uh, bull market where you know, SPX, among many other uh, indices, is on a steady rise without many days of big lows. Uh, you can also see that in the relative strength index. Uh, and, you know, this is SPX at the time and actually in real time is at the high of the year. So as you see, you know, VIX on the right kind of start to fall. What that's telling you is that there isn't a lot of fear in the market, right? A lot of people are putting money into the market, um, continuing to put more money and seeing bigger returns, therefore less fear as SPX and many of the in other, many of the other indices continue to rise. When you're looking at, you know, February and March of this year, you see VIX is spiking to highs of 30 of the year where, you know, now we're down to the low teens and as low as, you know, 11 point. Eight one here. So if you look at VIX on the right and what's happening here, you follow that February, March timeframe, that's a lot of volatility, meaning a lot of moves up and down, left uh, up and down as we go left to right here. Um, and it's harder for investors at the time in that February and March period to really understand or think they can predict what's happening. That's a much different situation that we have going on here now from November to December, where there's not a lot of fear in the market. VIX is going down. And an important thing about VIX is that, you know, it's, it's an, a key factor or IV, I should say, and VIX as a, as a byproduct is a key factor for influencing option pricing. Um, you know, we talked about it reflecting the level of uncertainty or risk that is perceived by the market. Um, but what is the impact on options prices of the VIX or of IV? Well, the two are pretty much directly correlated. Higher implied volatility is going to generally lead to higher options premiums or prices, uh, which, you know, we talked about that means increased market uncertainty. So by selling options, at a higher price, you are taking on more risk as the option seller or by buying them at the higher price. Again, there is more risk. There's more to lose there where lower implied volatility will tend to result in lower options premiums. Again, that's, you know, taking on less risk or lower perceived risk of selling or buying options contracts. One more thing to point out here. So you know, as you see periods where IV is spiking and then falling, that's what we talk about IV contracting. So here's one here, here's another one. You know, you see these in the IV rank and IV percentile, and you can see them in VIX too, right? This is the one year, one day chart. Um, but if you were to go into, sorry, um, you know, 180 day, five minute chart for VIX at that at last week. You see days of, of VIX contracting and falling. You know, many of the option strategies that we're selling and then buying back, we want to sell high and buy back low, right, for the options pricing. And that can be uh, 
VIX or implied volatility measures the options contract pricing. And that's what we're looking to do is, you know, look at selling when VIX is high and buying back when VIX is low. So traders use IV and VIX to make decisions about entering or exiting options and which strategies to use. That's just an example, but you know, you'll see more of this as you go on in the courses.